Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Yesha, if you're new here, and I am a diagnostic radiology resident, and this is my husband. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Amr, and um, I did my residency in ear, nose, and throat surgery, or otolaryngology, head and neck surgery, and I did a fellowship in facial plastic and reconstructive surgery, and I'm currently in private practice. Today we're going to be talking about aware rotations, and when to do them, and if you need to do them, and I thought I would provide the radiology perspective, but with surgery and IR, I think it's a little bit of a different story, so I thought he would provide a good surgery slash IR perspective. The first thing we wanted to talk about are the goals of an away rotation, which I think is pretty standard across the board, no matter what you're doing your away rotation in, not just surgery or radiology, but anything. The first goal is just to see if you're a good fit. So you want to see if you like the program, if you like the people at the program, and see if you could personally see yourself at that program. And then the same goes the other way, where the program wants to see if you would be a good fit at their program. Yeah, I agree. I think that it, you know it goes both ways. Um, just like, in a sense, the program is interviewing you, you're also interviewing the program, yeah. and you want to make sure that um, both of those are, are a good mutual fit. The second goal of an OA rotation is to get a letter of recommendation. And just keep in mind that you may not use every letter that you get, so it's better to just ask at every OA rotation and every rotation that, hey, can you write me a letter? And then you can ultimately decide if you want to use that letter or not. But the ultimate point is that you want to get a letter from a big name person that's in the field and you'll figure that out by reading papers and you know just like asking around like hey who should I get a letter from here and you'll figure out that that one person's letter will actually get you pretty far. I had a big name letter writer that came up at every interview and I never would have guessed that seriously ever. Yeah no I, I definitely second that and once again you know you don't have to use all of the letters so the more you have, it's actually better because you can kind of choose, um, for example, if you want to apply to that program, it makes sense to send a letter for someone from that program mm -hmm. that you rotated at. So um, yeah, I think that's a really good point. Yeah. Another thing to add is that some letter writers will promise you a letter and then take forever to get them to you. So the more people you ask, at least you have a better chance of having enough letters on time so you can apply day one of ERAS right. opening right. or whatever, September 1st, that date. So you don't have to be waiting on someone to send in a letter for you. Right. And um, yeah, and ask early, um, set a timeline and set, try to set a deadline mm -hmm. and maybe even a little bit earlier than you actually need the letter mm -hmm. um, so that you can allow for some delays that might happen because you're really totally dependent on someone else yeah. to kind of finish this task for you. The third reason you want to do an OA rotation is that you want to network. You want to get good face time with all of the associate PDs, program directors, residents, and make them know that you really want to be there and that you're a hard worker, you have a good work ethic. The point is to shake as many hands as possible, period. What I wanted to talk about is how many OA rotations to do and when to do them. I'll start with radiology, and this is only for diagnostic radiology. I think interventional is totally separate and totally different in terms of what you should do, but for diagnostic radiology, honestly, you don't need to do any OA rotations. Definitely rotate at home, like your home program, because you do need a letter, at least one, from a radiologist, and you won't get that, obviously, without doing a rotation, but in terms of doing OA rotations, it's not required. If there's a specific program you want to go to, then maybe it would be a good idea. Definitely to get a letter, I would say, would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about for surgery so, or IR? Right, so surgery and IR kind of end up uh, getting clubbed together because they're both procedural fields and um, interventional radiology kind of behaves closer to surgery than it does to diagnostic radiology because there's just fewer spots and it's kind of similar personalities of people. Uh, what I would say is most people would do usually about two to three away rotations. Uh, the first one I would recommend is to rotate at your home program. And if you don't have a home program, then um, you should just all you have to do is just ask your dean or look back in the past and see other students who might have gone into the specialty you're interested in and see kind of what the kind of affiliated home program is. Because a lot of programs, even though their hospital might not have that residency, do have an affiliated residency. Uh, so the home program is really good and um, you'll feel at home, you'll feel comfortable and it'll allow you to um, get that experience and that specialty so that when you do go to the other places, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're not completely fresh and you know what mm -hmm. to expect and um, you can really do a frank comparison between mm -hmm. what your home program offers and what these programs offer, how it's the same, how it's different, and all of those factors. I think that's very true for interventional radiology because there are so few programs actually. So 
the chances yeah. that your med school has an interventional radiology residency is going to be pretty small. Mm -hmm. And then even having a specific rotation, I think, is not that common. If I if I recall, it's really not very common. So having that experience of going to another program to say that I did it, I'm really interested. Even just showing that interest will yeah. take you pretty far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you um, kind of stepped out and took the initiative, and I think mm -hmm. that that says a lot, um, you know, to the program directors as well as um, just on your application in general. What would you say is the best timeline to do an away rotation? I'm not that sure because I didn't really do that many in yeah. radiology. What I would say is, you know, so your applications go in in September, right? So if you really want these letters, the sooner the better. Um, a lot of schools will have a little bit of elective time during third year, and I actually was lucky that I was able to use this elective time to kind of do my home rotations, as well as a couple other rotations in some different specialties that I was considering. So that when fourth year started, um, I was ready to kind of just jump into the away rotations at, at other sites that I was interested in. Um, the whole process though, it's important to mention, kind of starts before you even start the away rotation, right with the application. So don't delay on the VSAS application, um, <laughs> get those out early, and apply broadly. I mean, um, sometimes spots fill up, so don't kind of bank on getting that rotation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you really want to be in a situation where you have a few to pick from and then you can decide where you want to go. Um, you know, when, when those VSAS applications open, um, you know, just get them out. Get them out as soon as you can. Um, and just keep in mind that some places do require you to either write an essay or submit maybe even letters of recommendation um, just to do an away rotation, especially places that are very popular. Mm -hmm. so, um, so just keep that in mind. So just to summarize the timeline, you really want to make sure you do a rotation in your specialty during third year, and then make sure you try to do the electives where you want a letter or something in early fourth year, because the later you get, things get delayed and you're going to be adding to your own stress of getting your application in on time. Um, that goes to say with like VSAS, you really have to apply as early as possible because A, spaces fill up, there's only like a couple of spots, especially for IR, which is such a small field in general, there won't be that many spots. And I do know that places that have like home med schools will get priority, those students will get priority. So make sure you apply early. And a lot of times you can actually email like the coordinator in advance because I think for every application you send for VSAS, it costs money. Mm -hmm. And so if you try to find out like, hey, am I even going to have a shot at this? Like, don't waste your money without at least making sure that there might be an opening for you. Yeah. Yeah. The next thing we wanted to talk about is where to rotate. Like, how do, how do you choose where to rotate? So when you're choosing where to rotate, I touched on this a little bit in terms of doing your home rotation first mm -hmm. and then choosing an additional one or two rotations. Some people do more, but I'd say most people will do two or three mm -hmm. rotations. When you're choosing a place to go, it's, there's kind of two schools of thought. One school of thought is rotate at you know, the places you really, really want to end up at, whether it's due to geographical area, whether it's due to proximity to family, whether it's due to the strength mm -hmm. of the program, mm -hmm. uh, research you're interested in, or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, the other school of thought is that um, you should rotate at programs that you might not otherwise want to consider because it'll give you um, a different viewpoint into things that you might not have mm -hmm. thought about otherwise. So um, that's something that you have to decide personally. What I would say is um, there's been students that maybe weren't the best applicants who rotated at programs and were really, really able to impress them mm -hmm. and got a spot mm -hmm. and vice versa. Students that were great applicants, but for whatever reason yeah. uh, had just had a bad experience or not even just had a bad experience, but were, it was really hard to shine. See, some of these big programs, I mean, they'll have for us, sometimes like 20 people rotating at once. So at it's, once? It's hard, it's hard to like, because you get lost in a sea of people. So sometimes it's hard to stand out. So that's also something to keep in mind. And everyone is on their A game. Everyone is trying to do their mm -hmm. best. So um, so it's just it's just hard, you know, it's, it's difficult. Um, so it's, if you have any um, specific questions, I would reach out to people in your specialty. And um, if you have questions about ENT or facial plastic surgery specifically, um, you can also reach out to Yasha and uh, you can get my perspective as well. So, I will add that you brought up a good point about geography because when you are interviewing for residency, it's by, one of the questions is like, would they really come here? For example, even in radiology, which is a huge, I mean, we have so many programs, it's a huge specialty. You wonder like, would this random person from across the country really come to our program and if you can prove that you have a connection to that 
area, you can convince the program that, yeah, I really would come there. And one of the ways to do that is to do an OA rotation. Uh, you know, the program really wants someone uh, as a resident who wants to be there. And the more factors that they can see that this person is really dedicated and they want someone that's going to be happy at their program because that means that that person is really going to be able to perform uh, at their best level. Mm -hmm. And so all of these factors kind of go into that. The last thing we wanted to talk about is what to do while you're at the away rotation. So, okay, you've secured it through visas, you're all set, you're packing your bags, you're going to this place for like four weeks. What do you do now? In radiology, there are a few things you want to do. Number one, you want to set up a meeting with the program director. This can be like maybe a couple weeks in so that you can show that like, oh, I've loved the first two weeks here. It's been great, blah, blah, blah. And then tell the program director why it's been so great for you. You also want to show interest in like everything that you're doing. So like even if you're just reading a CT or like, oh, that's an adrenal gland, like something silly, just like be really interested, be passionate about it and ask appropriate questions. And I add the word appropriate in there because you can tell when med students are just asking questions just to like ask questions. And there's a really fine line between being a really great student and then being like a little overbearing. You really want to get involved with research if you can, especially at an away rotation, like if you're at a big program, they will have lots of ongoing projects that they could definitely use like a set of hands or someone to go through patient charts, etc. So I think getting involved with research is easy and if you can get your name on a project, like on a paper, you can prove that like, hey, I really enjoyed it here, plus I did this research here and that was really valuable to me. Yeah, I, I really echo all of those things um, as far as on the surgery side. What they're really looking for is someone who's um, who's going to work hard, who's going to be there when you know they're supposed to be there, which could mean a lot of long hours, um, which can be hard, right? If you're going to a place you really want to be at, um, rather than working the whole time, you know, maybe you want to be out, you know, you want to enjoy the area, but really that's not why you're there. Mm -hmm. You want to be be there early. You want to stay late, but at the same time, you don't want to be overly aggressive. You don't want to try and show up other students. Yeah. You want to be there. You want to do what you're asked to do and always maintain a smile on your face and always be happy about it because that's what that's what really that they're looking for mm -hmm. is someone that will work hard and will maintain a good attitude um, despite all the mundane tasks that might be asked for you to do. Mm -hmm. The other thing is um, uh, on the surgical side, I would say that in the operating room, Generally, I wouldn't ask too many questions if, um, you know, if things are going on and if someone asks you to uh, name something as far as the anatomy, I would know that pretty well. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know it, then go read about it and then maybe the next day say, well, I looked this up and this is what I learned. Mm -hmm. A lot of times also um, during rotations that I did, I was asked to do a presentation at the end of the rotation. Yeah, so um, I would work hard on this and really get good mentorship regarding it. Also do set up a meeting with the program director and or chairman to get letters as Yasha mentioned. But the biggest thing I'd say is, you know, be on time, um, maybe even be early. Don't be overbearing. So when the resident says you should go, um, you should go, you shouldn't try to stick around. <laughs> Work with your fellow students that are rotating, not against them. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, just be a pleasant person to be around. And that's honestly all you can, all you can really do and then hope for the best. Mm -hmm. I think we've touched on everything for the OE rotations. Yeah, I mean, I think this was a, a good video of all the things I wish I knew when I went through the whole yeah. process. And um, that's, all, that's all, always our goal is to help you guys out. So um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, you know how to get a hold of us. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in again, and we'll see you next week. Sounds good. Bye. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. <laughs>